there everybody my name is crafty kathy and i want to welcome you to my channel whether this is your first time or your millionth time coming here welcome and thank you so much for spending your time with me today i'm a small business owner here in chattanooga tennessee i do booth for resale i'm actually a nurse by trade but i love to do diy decor and I just love doing the booth life. I love being a nurse, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love caring for people. It's a big passion of mine and I love making people happy and laugh. But the booth life is just kind of my thing. It helps me to, I don't know, almost like escape reality. It gives me an outlet and I hope it does you guys too. And I hope that this video and all my videos will inspire you guys and give you that outlet too. And that you'll be lighthearted and positive when you leave here and feel uplifted. This week, I have kind of like a hodgepodge of uh, DIYs for you guys. There's no specific theme. There's a couple of different colors even in there. I had some things happening in my personal life and it just kind of threw me off kilter. You guys know that my sister has been battling cancer for a while now, and I told you guys about a month ago that she went to the ER, she was in a lot of pain, and they found that it spread to her bones. I just got a call a minute ago that they called in hospice, and I went to go see her yesterday because her husband said, you need to come spend time with her because it's happening really fast. And so that's what's been going on. And I'm really kind of um, just, I don't know, I, I'm not okay. I promised myself that I was going to get through this intro and I'm going to get through it. That's what's going on with me right now. So if you would just give your girl a little grace and don't forget to say some prayers for my family and especially for my sister. Her name's Melissa. She's 10 years older than me, and I hate cancer because it doesn't, it's not fair. It's not fair. It takes your hopes and dreams and your future and your past, and it just destroys it. I mean, it's so painful, you know. I just wanted y'all to know that if you notice anything off or whatever, that's what's going on. But let's just get into these DIYs. I'll feel better and get myself together once we get into those. And I'll see you guys in just a minute. DIY number one is a frame and picture that I got at the thrift store. I paid $8 for it. And I absolutely loved the picture. And that's what my living room is in but I do not like that gold and brown that is in the frame. I wanted to show you the back of this frame and show you how well it was made. And for $8, I feel like I got a good deal. And so I am going more with white and a cottagey look in my living room. So that's what I did. I used the Rust-Oleum matte two times in white and I gave it three coats. You know, when I put it back in the frame, I was pleasantly surprised. I was kind of thinking the white and black maybe wouldn't look too good, but man, it's like that white just sets that picture off. And here, I'm just wet distressing it. And all I do is take my towel and I put a little bit of water on it and use my finger. And the paint is still a little tacky and I just rub where I want that dark color from underneath to pop out. Then I got some black paint and I put just a little bit on my finger and daubed the majority of it off. And I'm in fast motion here, so it shows you how slow I went. But if you notice, all of these little scrolly patterns are raised all around this frame. And then the little beads around the actual picture are raised. So I just kind of went around it and very lightly distressed it with my finger. I let my finger hit the high points, which was the little scrolly things, and I start off small because you can always add more if you need to, but it's a little bit harder if you need to take away. So 
I started adding and I really liked the way it looked and I just went hog wild and added as much as I wanted to until my eyes were happy. You can see here, even though I'm in fast motion, you can see how I'm just kind of rubbing over the high points that are sticking up. Those are the ones that I really wanted to stick out and be like, hey, look at me, here I am, because man, it just really made the picture, I think. And I think it made such a difference by doing this distressing. This just goes to show that sometimes you can buy something that don't exactly go perfectly with your decor, but all it needs is just a fresh coat of paint and it looks like it was made for your wall. What do y'all think about this? If you're enjoying my content so far, there's a few things I'd like to ask you. Hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family. I'd love to have you and we always have room. And if you would, hit the like button because it lets YouTube know that you really like my content and I appreciate every single subscribe and every single like from you guys. So let's move on to DIY number two. Now this one is an old suitcase that I found at a yard sale. It took me a minute to remember where I found it. But as you see, that faux leather has been like peeling up. So I've got a little remedy for that. I'm using my Star Bond glue and it is a perfect super glue and it has this accelerator that you spray. You put your glue down on one side and the accelerator to the other side. And when you hold it down, it takes about 10 seconds and it's really on there. So I got smart and I grabbed this little, like it's a piece of flooring actually. And when I would spray it, I would hold it down and it would just get it perfectly on there. Now this suitcase is not a real suitcase from like the 50s or whatever. It's just a like a knockoff. The price tag on the bottom of it showed that it was bought at Hobby Lobby for about 10 bucks on clearance. So like I said, I went around it and it took me quite a while to fix all the areas where the faux leather was like curling up on me. And I had the idea to turn this little suitcase into a side table. And I saw these that had the legs that looked like this and I had them on hand so I thought, Let's save some money instead of buying those hairpin legs off of Amazon, and let's try this. So I used my vintage linen, it's DIY paint, my favorite paint, and I painted that middle part. I wanted to keep those, I guess, like suspenders almost that, that you see there, the little um, leather. It almost looks like a belt or suspenders to me. So I painted that whole middle part, that vintage linen color. Because wouldn't you know, we're going to do a little decoupage on this one. I was actually pulling into my driveway, and I have one of those small garden flags, and I thought, man, that would be so pretty on that suitcase if I can make it work. And I just so happened to have just purchased this color called Water Lily. And look at this beautiful blue color. It just takes my breath. It's so pretty. And I buy all of my paints from Milton's daughter, and she gives you guys, my subscribers, a 10% um, discount for any DIY, well, the paint's not included because they don't let you put coupons of any kind on the paint, but any IOD products that you buy from her, you get 10% off. So, to make a long story short, it took me forever to get around all these little beads and stuff, and it was crazy to paint this thing. I took the little stand outside and I gave it a couple of coats of a color called khaki. And look at this flag. This is the one that I thought would be so cute on this. And we're just gonna Mod Podge it down. Here, I have the top or the lid of the suitcase taken off, so it would be easier to Mod Podge it on there. It actually fit perfectly on there, so I wanted to do it in small sections like I like to do. And I'm doing about two inches up the suitcase, you can see, at one time. And it was really easy because it's, it works like a fabric. You just have to put more Mod Podge than you normally would and use your fingers to smooth it down. 
and then I worked all the way, well, I went down to the bottom part here, and then I worked all the way up this suitcase. And this part is really sped up, so you know that I was in fast motion putting this thing together. And it didn't take very long to get the flag Mod Podge on there. And I know you're going to want to know, the flag came from Ollie's. Then I worked this piece of fabric almost like a sandwich, and it was the middle part. So I have the Mod Podge underneath, and then I put a good layer of Mod Podge on the top of it also to seal it in. And I used my little brayer to help, you know, position it down and kind of push it down into that Mod Podge a little better. This is the top of the box or the suitcase that I'm actually putting the last bit of Mod Podge on. And everything went really smooth and quick. You know, it takes us a few days to put these whole this whole video together. And when I was doing these DIYs, there was, I think, two of them in the time that my sister was really sick. And then Wednesday, I made the announcement that they called in hospice. And today is Thursday morning. I'm finishing up my voiceover. I was getting ready to go to my sister's house this morning, and my mom called me at 9 frantic and said that she had just passed away. So, God answered her wish. She didn't want to linger and let her kids see her, you know, just dwindle down to nothing. Because she had a husband die of cancer, and that happened. And she said she didn't want to put her husband and her kids through that. And so, God did answer her wish, and I'm so thankful that she's not suffering anymore. But it's really hard. And I just ask for you guys' prayer. Y'all are like my family. I normally wouldn't talk about anything like this on a video. But you guys are like my family. And I know that y'all can tell that I'm kind of off anyway. And, and I know that y'all care about me and love me and want to know what's going on. Here, I'm taking my Debbie's DIY White Wax. And as much as I love that color, Water Lily, you still have to seal it. That's the only thing about the DIY paints is you have to seal them or water will activate them again. So, I sealed it real good with this white Debbie's DIY White Wax. And I just am so in love with this color. And it was just, I don't like matchy-matchy. So, if it was the same color of blue, it wouldn't have looked as good as it does. But since it's a lighter shade of blue than the truck, I just think it's breathtaking. So, all you do is wipe that wax on everything and then wipe it back off. And here's what we got. I absolutely love this because you can use it as a table or you can open it up and use it as storage or actually you can do both. And here we go into DIY number three. 
This is a Lazy Susan that I've been working on for a while. This is the color that it originally was, and this is the color that I'm going to be spray painting it, my matte black Rust-Oleum. Now, I've already painted one side, but I wanted you to see its natural color, and of course, I used a little bit of shellac, even though the black would have been covered up. I did anyway. It's just habit, I guess. And I was wanting to put some grain stripes on something so desperately. So I'm going to show you guys how to do your grain stripes. You just put two pieces of tape down and you put them as far apart as you want your grain stripe to be. Then you take your paint and I'm going to use that beautiful blue water lily color. And you just very carefully paint it, or you can use a dauber and daub it. I gave this two coats, and I also went down the sides there where the paint goes, just so it would look uniform. You pick up your two pieces of tape, and it reveals this beautiful, crisp, perfect line. And I went really slow with taking those off, and when it was dry, and I dried it, I cover up my stripe in the middle. Then you're going to make two smaller stripes, one on each side of that bigger stripe. And you make those as big as you want also. I just eyeballed them and made them just about perfect as far as being the exact same size and then i painted those with two coats and dried them also but on this one i decided to daub it now when i am daubing it or using the paint you just try to be careful not to let that paint go up underneath that tape make sure that your edges are down really good and then you're going to take the tape off and reveal your beautiful grain stripe. Now you can do this many grain stripes or you can put two more if you want to. There is no wrong way to do your DIY. So I got this stencil from Stencil Smith and I'll leave everything that I use in the description box below, but it says ye old antique fair flea market open from nine to noon, five fine goods, rarities, and other vintage collectibles, I think. And you don't have to use the whole thing. You can just use pieces of the stencil. And so I'm using white, so it will cover up real good and kind of pop on top of that black and the blue and make it look really good. And I just did the Ye old Antique Flea Market, and that's all I did on that one. And when I pulled the stencil up, it wasn't as crisp and perfect as I wanted it to be. And as you see, I made a few mistakes. But it's no problem because the DIY paint is reactivated with water. So I just wet the end of my rag and wiped off any spots that I messed up and then I touched it right back up. No problem. When you have a little whoops like this, and it really wasn't that bad at all, you just fix it the best you can and hold your head up high. Look at those colors. You can see the black doesn't perfectly match up, but it doesn't matter because it was still wet here when it dried. It looked absolutely perfect. Hey, if y'all stuck with me through this whole video, I want to thank you and let you know that I love each and every one of y'all. And I'm going to show you guys a few pictures that have me and my sister in them. That's me when I got married. And you know, the pictures where it shows the little kids, that's me and my sister and my brother. I'm the little one and she was older. And you know, I just can't believe she's gone. It just doesn't seem real and it really hasn't sunk in yet. But I love you guys and just remember, we're not promised tomorrow and you never know when it's gonna be your last time to say goodbye. So don't wait till tomorrow to mend those relationships, you know, and love everybody and be kind. And I try to push that on my channel. Life has a way of tearing you down enough. We shouldn't do it to each other. We should lift each other up and love each other. I love you and I appreciate you very much. And I'll be seeing you soon.